How's it going guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to show you guys how I would bake the maps for this character inside Substance Painter. So you can either render it or put it in a game engine like Unreal Engine or uh, Marmoset Toolbag for final uh, render. So right now um, I'm basically working on the texture on this character and this is in Substance Painter. Um, I'm using iRay to just preview it and see how my textures are and I think this is a really good preview to basically uh, tune your maps and then uh, push it into the game engine that you want to use. So let's get it started. Let me show you the um, scene organization in Maya and naming and how I would export everything into Painter for baking. Uh, for this character I used Maya, ZBrush and 3D Code to create the lowers geometry. This is actually not very low res, but it's fine. Like for example, ropes could be more low res, but because I want to make it like really high quality in the game engine and it's um, kind of like a presentation character or like a cinematic um, character, uh, I'm not trying to go too low. But at this point, it's 277,951 polygons and that's not bad actually. I might still have to add a bunch of things to finalize this, like um, eyelashes and things like that, but it wouldn't go more than 280,000 polygons. And it's actually good for next generation of consoles, depending on what character you're making. So this is not a problem. Um, regarding the geometry, when you import your lowers into Maya, make sure to name everything properly and organize everything properly. The first thing you need to do, you need to make a group for all of your uh, meshes uh, basically put them in one group and uh, name that group whatever the name is uh, and the suffix should be underscore low the suffix uh, underscore low will be used to basically bake each one of these geometries um, separately this belt piece has like three different pieces of geometries right I mean all these buckles and loops are, are combined as one geometry and the same with these uh, buttons uh, and the, the leather belt, they are, they are merged together to be together basically. So when I select them all, if I go to UVs, as you can see, um, I put them all into one UV layout basically. That's what I do for every one of these pieces. So like for example, the, the body um, has like several UDIMs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Head is separate, front of the body is separate, back of the body is separate, arm is separate, hands, um, right leg, left leg, and feet. Uh, the reason I do that is because I want to have a pretty nice high resolution texture for this whole character. And the other reason that I keep these geometries as separate pieces is because I want to make sure that to basically bake them as clean as possible. One of the things that I didn't do on this, I would usually cut um, like an edge loop um, to support this piece of like button or whatever basically you have on top of another geometry because when I give this to riggers if, if someone is supposed to rig this if these um, vertices are aligned properly then when they rig it the geometry is not going to slide when they animate this belt and the whole character so basically you need to have a support on the pieces that are on top of each other. In this case for the body we won't need it because the body is high res enough and these um, edge loops are uh, basically relatively close to um, what we have uh, on the body. So that's another thing that you should keep in mind. So the way I laid out the UVs for this guy is basically if I go to the UV layout, this is actually super important because if you don't do the UVs properly um, Substance Painter will have issues with baking and sometimes it doesn't bake anything and you have to figure out if there is an issue with your geometry or your UVs. In this case I actually at first laid out all the UVs on, on, from left to right and I have um, and I had some overlapping UVs like for example the UVs from this piece was bleeding into the other one and I had to look for uh, that and fix it basically. So. Make sure your UVs are, are clean and laid out properly. Everything is in the right place. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, and then ten more here and then two more here. And make sure that your UV edges are 
there's a there's a slight distance between each UV shell and make sure everything is um, inside the box basically uh, that's another thing to keep in mind so what we want to do when you export this character into painter we want to bake each one of these groups of geometries one by one like for example if I go into ZBrush this character has a shoulder pad and this shoulder pad basically comes with stitches and some metal pieces right and then I have straps here I have more uh, buttons here what I want to do I want to bake these uh, straps as a separate geometry I want to bake these buttons as a separate geometry and I want to bake these separately and also the the shoulder the leather part including the stitches separately so the shoulder and the leather parts um, what I do is basically I would decimate this geometry uh, and then decimate um, the stitches and then um, after decimation when you decimate them I would actually um, what do you call it merge visible use merge visible to merge everything so make sure to hide any sub tool that you don't want to merge because basically merge visible is going to merge anything that is visible and in this case I just wanted to merge all the decimated shoulder pieces so I hide everything except uh, the shoulder pieces the other thing you want to do keep in mind like for example if you want to bake the ID maps inside substance painter basically ID maps are really useful when you have like geometries like stitches attached to a piece of leather or something like that like in this case these are uh, these um, basically pieces of metals or whatever they are they're separate geometries even on the low res they are separate so in this case for, for me it's easier actually to texture them inside substance painter I can easily mask it because they're they're separate geometry and I will show you guys how at the end of this video so once you do this I actually create ID maps for the stitches and to separate the leather and the, and the stitches uh, and then I'll export this as an OBJ as a separate object. So what you need to do, you need to decimate all the geometries and import them one by one into Maya and match it to the low res. For example, if you have a rope here, you need to make sure to have a high res model matching this rope geometry. And it should be exactly in the same position. And you should also name it or, or, ogre underscore rope underscore zero five underscore high. So high res, I, I name it high, low res, I name it low. And you can actually decide the suffix, it doesn't matter, you can actually say low poly or LP for low res and high poly or HP for high res because you can define in Painter which one is um, low, which one is high. If I go to the high res section, so basically I have the high res model, decimated version of the high res model inside Maya. Everything is decimated, it's inside Maya, it's um, 27 million polygons inside Maya. I import it into Maya because I want to name it properly and match the names to the low-res models and then export the whole high-res group as FBX from Maya. The reason I export it as FBX is because FBX files holds all the geometries and their names as they are inside Maya and it won't merge these pieces together because we need to use these pieces as separate pieces to bake inside Substance Painter and we don't want the names to change at all. When you load your, your geometries into Maya, uh, if they're lining up on top of each other, you can just click and drag and select both geometries that are related to each other. And then what you can do, you can copy this name, okay, and then go to your high res group uh, and then paste the name onto your high res. The next thing you need to do, I usually do that for every single uh, geometry. Like for example, let's say I want to bake, uh, like name this, these uh, geometries so I'll select everything and then this is the high uh, low res I copy the name and then I go to the high res and paste the name right so right now both are the same exactly we don't want them to be exactly the same name what I need to do is I need to select these geometries that I renamed once you copy paste the names you just select the high res models go to modify search and replace names and then you just say search for low replace it with high and then apply this way you can easily quickly rename everything on the high res model match it to the low res and then select everything and then let's say search in this case i'm going to just do something as a test high to low 
So as you can see, everything is changed to low. Keep in mind that it is going to replace the word um, high anywhere in your geometry names. That means if you have the word high in the middle of your geometry names, it is going to change it with the word low in this case. So make sure to check your model names after you use this search and replace tool. In this case, it's actually working well because it's only changing the, the suffix, as you can see. Once you name everything, what you need to do is you need to export your lores. Uh, you can either select a group or select all the geometries and export them using the export selection. When you hit export selection, make sure to select FBX. And then I didn't change any settings here. Um, it's like a sporting groups are basically, these are, these are my settings. You can use the same settings. I think this is the default because I didn't change anything. And then when I export it, I export it as um, Ogre, whatever, like low res, low res final. Or in this case, I was testing a bunch of things. So this is my final geometry. Um, and then do the same thing with the high res model. So I have groups here, uh, layers here. I can turn off the low res and select the high res geometry and basically export selection. And then in this case, I'm going to name it um, Ogre High Res Final underscore zero two. Our high res and low res are ready to get baked. So uh, just to repeat again, keep in mind that every pieces of geometry that you want to bake should be separate. Uh, like, for example, um, I don't want to bake these two together because I don't want the, these details in these geometries to bleed baking into this geometry. That's why I'm keeping these ones separate. I'm keeping everything basically separate. The other thing I wanted to show you guys on my lowers, if you noticed, I have some of these stitches made into the lowers. The reason is because they were changing the silhouette and I want to keep the silhouette uh, really nice and uh, clean. That's why I tried to keep, keep some of these uh, shapes on, uh, on the silhouette. So I made them into the lowers. Um, the other thing is teeth are separate, gums uh, are separate, uh, his tongue is separate, uh, these loops are separate. Regarding the, the ropes, ropes could be more optimized. I just made these Loris models inside ZBrush using zero measure. Basically, I just zero meshed it and cleaned it up a bit. Not, not much because this is a personal work and I, I'm more into like making the character look good inside Unreal Engine and I don't have to really manage memory at this point. So it's totally okay to have uh, a bit more high resolution pieces on your character. Another look into the UVs. I'm gonna show you how I made the UVs. This is the head. This is the front of the body, back of the body, and so on. This is the UDIMS for the body part. This is the, these are the belts. These pieces are the belt uh, geometries. So if I push this to the side so you guys can see what I'm doing. I believe these are the uh, wraps on the leg and the feet. Um, these are the ropes. If I select the shells, as you can see, this is the second set of shoulder pads. Like these two, I'm doing it together. And I have the stitches again on these guys. Same thing. And these metal pieces are separate. Uh, same thing with this. This is the bigger shoulder pad with the straps and these uh, metal pieces and the stitches are um, basically on the low res as i said this these are the um, armor pieces and the uh, wrist um, um this piece basically and same thing with this guy i have this separate this is separate these are separate these are separate these two could could go together it doesn't matter like i can merge them it's not going to change anything but i kept it separate so but it doesn't matter because there's uh, they're not really close to each other. There's a distance. So if you merge them together and bake them as one piece, it would actually work fine. But if you merge these two together and bake them inside Painter, then it's actually going to bleed into each other. So these two, I have to keep them separate. But the UVs are including basically these pieces. These are all in, in one UV, as you can see, in one shell. The next thing is, these are the loops. Um, all the metal loops that I have on this character, uh, the, 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 these ones that are holding the wooden panels and um, 
these ones, these ones. They're all into one UV shell. The next thing is these wooden panels. Again, these are all merged together because there is a distance between them, so they're going to bake fine. These are separate because, uh, again, if I bake all of these together, these metal pieces are going to bleed into the wood and vice versa. And I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that they bake really nice and clean. Our next one is um, this big belt. This big belt is uh, basically, these are separate. The belt is separate and this um, leather height piece is separate as well. The next one is leg armors, leg wraps and all of that are one piece. These maces or whatever they are, metal pieces. And also uh, the scared pieces. For the scared pieces, I have them into two separate uh, geometries because I, I want to make sure they don't bleed into each other again. As you can see, they're separate um, geometries. They're not actually attached anywhere. For these pieces, I just have one extrude just to give it some volume. Usually, this is what I'll do. Let's say this is the edge of the cloth. Then I will actually push this inside and basically like that just to give it a nice edge but you don't want to have like double-sided cloth you don't want to have cloth on the other side just this much is enough just two edge loops basically one for the uh, for the thickness and another one to just hide this edge inside so that's that basically this is the cloth and that is it basically i have everything ready to go uh, so in this case both upper teeth and lower teeth are in their own UV layout and at the end they will have their own textures and a separate shader. Also both gums and the tongue have their own UV layout. Just remember that the upper teeth and the lower teeth are separate geometries because when I bake I want to make sure they don't bleed into each other. But they both go into the same UV layout. So once this is done, I'm going to export everything, as I said, as FBX and let's get into Painter and I will show you guys how I would import this and bake it inside uh, Substance Painter. All right, so now we are in Painter. I'm going to open a new scene. This is basically my working progress right now. I'm working on it. And if I press I array, you can see how it looks. The textures are not done. I'm just working on it. I applied some materials on it, basically some smart materials from Substance Painter itself and I'm using some procedural textures inside Substance Painter to texture this character. Uh, I worked a bit on his face and some of his leather pieces but not everything so I still need to uh, push this further and make it a finalized piece. If you guys are interested check my YouTube channel because I did a live on this guy showing my process in Substance Painter when I paint a texture map. This IR is actually pretty good this is like using an HDR map inside painter to basically render right now i'm choosing this i can change it i can change it to another map it's pretty cool like you can test your characters using different setups and see how your textures are when they're rendered you know and then later if you import this into marmoset on unreal it's going to look even better so let me show you my baking process in substance painter now i'm going to load uh, the lowers model what I'm going to do, um, I'm using Unreal Engine 4 algorith algorithmic um, template. Then I'll put it on 2048 document resolution. DirectX, everything is the same. And I just turn on use UV tile workflow. This is the old version of UV tile. This is the new one because you can paint across UV tiles if you decide to. In this case, I separated the body into different UDIMs. And I can I can use a UDIM to paint across like between the neckline and the body. So I choose that and I select and basically I'm going to load my low res final geometry, which is the FBX file that includes um, many different pieces of geometry for each part named with a suffix of underscore low. So I'm going to load that when I was actually doing a test on this guy, I found a bunch of issues. So I had to fix those issues and basically some of those issues are, for example, when you bake, you can look around and you will see like some geometries are clipping or some of these buttons were not in the right place. 
baking time is actually is a good time to look at your geometry and inspect it property and fix all the errors. It usually would take you a day if it's a complicated model to basically clean it up, test it, clean up, test it until you get the best result. Geometry is loaded. This is flat. There is nothing there. As you can see, uh, one more thing that I didn't mention inside Maya, I applied different uh, shaders to each UV layouts. For example, this whole shoulder armor piece, these are all going together, right? And then I have the same shader. I just called it shoulder zero one. Uh, doesn't matter. I can change the name in Substance Painter. So I didn't want to spend so much time in Maya, but I'm going to organize it after. Or these these ones are going together, so they have shoulder zero two. Or for the ropes, they're all going to the together. I will bake them all in one UV um, set or in one UV layout. It's going to be one texture, so I just applied a, a shader called it ropes. And then when you import this into Painter, you will see that it's going to create different layers or texture sets based on the number of shaders that you have. So here, eyes are separate. Um, like if I look at isolate this, the feet are separate. These are part of the same body, but I apply the different separate material or shader just to, to the feet. So I can bake them separately. Uh, wraps, forearm. So uh, as you can see, these are all, they have each one of these, they have their own um, basically going to, they're, they're going to have their own texture and they have their own, their own shader applied to them. The other thing is these geometries are separate. Like for example, if I create a layer here, paint layer here, and if I mask it, as you can see, um, like let me actually change the color to red so it's more visible. I'm gonna apply a black mask, dark mask basically, and add a paint. If I select based on, um, mesh, right? These are separate, right? Or, or this is a separate piece. The wood is a separate piece. And in this case, this big spheres and the bottoms are together. They are one geometry because they're so small. So if the bake bleeds into each other, it doesn't matter. I'm okay with that. But basically this piece has like one, two and three different group of models, but all of these are going to be baked into the same texture. The material and the UV sets, texture sets are defining which pieces are baked into the same texture sheet, even though they're separate geometry. That's that. Now let me actually start baking. I'm going to show all and then under the texture set, I'm going to open the bake mesh maps and I'm going to load my high res final model, which is an FBX file. Now, let me actually choose one part to work on it. Let's say I'm going to work on the body first. Okay. So I'm going to select hands, head, left leg, right leg. I want to hide everything else except these and just maybe a bell, body front and body back and the arms, right? And the feet. The body is one geometry, but has, but it's using UDIMs and the belt is set different geometries and they're using the same UDIM. I'm going to open the bake mesh and under the selection, I'm going to deselect everything and just put arms, uh, belt, body back, body front, feet, um, hands, head, left leg, right leg. I need to fix the naming on some of these. And then I'm going to turn off ID because I'm going to, I don't need the ID map for these. Um, after that, I'm going to go under common. I'll put this on 2K. I, I usually test with 512 just to bake it fast so I can see if there's any issues with the geometry. But in this case, I already fixed those errors and there is no problem. So I'm going to bake on the 2K map. You can actually bake 4K, I actually baked 4K for the final result because I want to render this character at some point. Now I'm going to load the final high-res model and then we don't need a cage. That's totally fine. And then we're going to bake by mesh name. We'll bake it once with the default frontal distance and rear distance and we'll see how it works. So I'm going to bake this, pause the video and come back. 
while this is baking, I just thought that maybe I can mention some stuff. I had questions about how do I um, bake the fingers because they're close together. Do I need to use a cage or how do I solve the problems under the armpit areas or things like that? So my geometry is actually has enough resolution to cover the whole high risk model. And if I set this bake distance correctly, I won't need a cage. It's actually going to bake in a clean way and everything is going to be nice and basically clean. So once this is baked, we can look at some of the errors and I will show you guys how you can set your distance and fix it up. I want to cover some of the questions I had. David Gonzalez was asking, will you cover how to bake multiple objects without them intersecting and creating weird artifacts? Uh, and he's saying that's what I'm struggling with. So my answer is this is actually going to uh, solve that problem if you follow the steps that I'm showing you guys here. Um, basically, you won't need a cage and it's going to work well uh, once we problem solve it. The other question is, let me actually go through some questions here. Again, people are asking the same thing. It's hard to get clean bakes. Do you use cage? Um, um, as I mentioned, if you have a really nice clean model, um, like if you look at my wireframe geometry here. So this geometry is high-res enough to cover the high-res model really well. And the bake is going to come out clean. You don't need a cage. It's just about like playing with the with the distances to basically make it work. I have never ever used any cage, even for production, like even when I worked in on games, professional games or other products. So you won't need a cage. Let me actually see if there are any other questions. So one of the question is, is coming from Maddie James. Uh, the question is, is it too late to add something about polygon counts and zero emissions sure subdivided um, low? I don't know what that means how high, high poly preparation to a smooth transition into substance. So as I said, for the high poly preparation, you need to uh, make sure your high res and low res are matching proper, properly. In my case, if, I, if you look at this, when I turn on the layer on the high res model, everything is imported into Maya and everything is matching 100%. Basically, if I select my low res geometry, I'm going to put it in the cage. So that's my, my low res, right? It's matching my high res model everywhere, right? It's a hundred percent match. Some of these meshes, um, I made them using zero measure and then cleaned it up. The shoulder pads, I made them in 3D coat. I had a base for the body and I took it into a 3D coat and fixed it up. And so basically it's half, half zebra, ZBrush and 3D coat. All of the ropes, I made them in, in ZBrush using zero measure because I wanted to keep the density of the geometry and make it look nice. Basically, when I bake it, I wanted to keep the details, so I used zero measure. These wooden panels are modeled in uh, ZBrush, high res in Z ZBrush, and Retopo inside 3D coat. And this is actually made inside completely. I just made everything on this one in ZBrush, high res and low res, everything is in ZBrush. So I created a nice clean geometry using uh, Z modeler, and then I exported everything into Maya. So I didn't touch this in Maya at all. Everything is in ZBrush. I just UV'd it uh, inside Maya. That's it. So these days I'm only using Maya basically for UV mapping. Louise is asking, I want to learn how to solve the baking on problematic areas like armpits that are overlapping in T-pose. So this, this, the way that I'm going to bake now is actually fixing that problem. So let's look at this. I'm going to, the way I problem solve is like I select the arms and just look at them individually, right? So if I spot anything weird, then I need to fix it. So that's that's a bit strange. There's like some um, issues there. It's not much. It's actually not a, not a deal killer, basically. But I'll show you how to fix that. Besides that, if I look at the hands. Um, I mean, right now I should have some issues with the fingers, right? You see, or even with the head. I will have some artifacts around the eyes and sections like that so what I'm going to do I'm gonna select the arms and I'm going to go to the bake and I'll reduce this to one-fifth of the distance something like that right and then I'm only going to bake the arms so I'll turn off everything except the arms 
So this is ready. This time, I'm, I'm only going to bake the normal map to make sure that everything is basically clean, right? I'll set the anti aliasing uh, and, and basically sampling at uh, 2 by 2 I think that's enough for now, and I'll just bake at 1, 1k, uh, just to test it quickly. So let's bake the normal map for this piece. The next thing I want to bake is the hands, right? So I want to turn on both of these so I can look at them together. What I'll do, again, under the bake, I'm just going to bake normal. This is a test and I'll turn off the arm and I'm just going to bake the hands. If this works, then um, I, I can bake the whole thing. So I'm just going to bake it. Super sampling by mesh name. By the way, this is actually what you guys should understand. You put the match on by mesh name. You remember like in Maya, we said suffix high, low and high. This is for the lowest model. This is for the highest model. So what it's going to do, it's actually looking at your Maya file, your FBX file, and, and it's looking for similar names with different suffixes, right? So in this case, when it's going to bake the rope 5, it's looking for Ogre Rope 05 low for the lowest model. And then basically it's going to look at um, the highest model and it's going to search for the same name here. So in this case, Ogre Rope 05 high. So when I get back to Substance Painter, a low high and then when I bake now it's going to bake the relative geometry like relative highest to the lowest mesh so I'm gonna bake and let's see if it's going to fix these artifacts between the fingers the best way to problem solve this is to test and find out what would work best for in your case right so there are still some artifacts here we can we can try and bake again I need to bake everything else to get it off those artifacts this should work my bad so let me actually put it back on 002 the artifacts are coming from the other maps so if I bake it now it's going to fix the whole thing as you can see normal map is clean there is no artifacts if your if your lowest model has enough geometry and if it's matching 100% to the highest then you will not get any artifacts so as you can see, I can see already that, that, that the maps are cleaned up. It's pretty clean. There's a line here. I mean, I wouldn't worry about too much about that. When you texture it, you won't you won't see it. You can also increase the resolution of the texture to basically make it look better. So what I'm gonna do in this case, I'm gonna bake the whole thing at the same time. Actually, let's let's check everything and let's bake everything together. Let's see how it works. So I'm still baking. Uh, it's gonna take a while, but I'm pa pausing the video. It's baking about 138 different maps. While this is baking, if you guys are enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video, share it with your friends, because um, maybe it will help more people to learn. It's going to help me to make my channel better over time you know so if you guys do that that will be great the other thing I want to mention is I have mentorship uh, plans that I'm actually teaching in a small number of classes and so far it's been successful you can join my discord group ask questions um, collaborate with people I'll put the link in the description and if you guys want to check I mean ask more questions about my mentorships I have one-on-one -on -one mentorships and group classes that I basically teach um, and improve, help you improve your work, your workflow. I'll show you how to make a character from scratch, from anatomy, how to make armors, how to do work in, you know, Marvel's designer, you know, fix your patterns, you know, basically export them into ZBrush, um, make a clean model, sculpt on top of it, and, and so on. How to bake maps, which is what I'm showing to you guys now. At the end of this video, once I finish baking this character, I'm going to also make a Substance Painter tutorial about how to texture this character. And if you have any questions, yeah, join my Discord group, ask questions, talk to people. I mean, you can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, and other platforms. So that would be great to have your support. And I'll do my best to provide quality content for you guys. Also, if you have any suggestions for tutorials, 
something that would be helpful for you guys like like a short tutorial like 20 minutes one hour you know maximum one hour because you don't want to I don't want to go longer than that to make it watchable for you guys as you can see this one is giving me errors for the eyes I shouldn't have selected the eyes it doesn't matter because I didn't want to bake the eyes I already have textures and materials for the eyes they're just templates so whenever you get a red error just make sure to read it and make sure to figure out if it's a problem or not and we didn't bake the um, ID map at this point because I don't need ID maps for this character except uh, the shoulder pads as I as I mentioned everywhere wherever that I have stitches it's the sh I mean I have some stitches on the shoulder pads because they're attached to the you know the leather part of the shoulder pad and, and it's hard to paint it by hand so what I will do um, it's easier for me to mask it in ZBrush and apply a vertex color and export it as an OBJ and then import it into Painter and then bake it, bake the ID maps. I'll show you guys the setting about that as well. So I have similar stuff on the belt on the bottom part, like basically his the big belt. It's like uh, leather and, and stitches. That's why I need ID map. I don't need ID map for these metal pieces because they are already a separate group and a separate geometry, so I can bake them without any problem. Uh, with basically naming it high and low. This is the high res underscore high will be the suffix, and the low res will be underscore low, as I mentioned. And what else? Um, let's see. When I was actually baking this character, I realized like there were some errors on different sections of the model, and I had to get back into ZBrush, fix some of the high res parts, like for example this one, I, I didn't notice the bottom part, it was, this this strap piece was like basically clipping into the the wrist and it was like not baking properly, so I came here and I fixed it and I matched the low res and basically what else, I had some issues with these uh, piercings and uh, you know, some other small issues. Uh, that's the thing, like when you bake a character like this, it's usually going to take you a day because you need to problem solve it, fix some of the errors and uh, put it together nicely. So that's going to take you some time. Um, let's look at the bake and see if it's done or not. That's why I do test bakes because I want to avoid baking this whole thing and then wait for an hour or 30 minutes and then realize that, oh, there is like so many errors. I usually bake at 5, 12 or 1K and I try with normal map. I'll make sure that the normal map is clean because usually when the normal map is clean, everything else is going to work well. Sometimes there might be issues with other maps, but usually based on my experience, based on the, I mean, so many characters that I baked and made, usually when the normal map is baking well, there won't be any issues with curvature or AO. And normal map is actually the fastest map, so that's why I bake it first on a lower resolution without super sampling and check it out to make sure that uh, I'm setting the bake distance correctly. In this case, I will have issues with some, some of the parts again, because I'm baking the whole character at the same time. And I might have to look at the shoulder pads or different areas and, you know, change, I mean, adjust that um, baking distance number basically. So it is done. Let's look at everything quickly. As you can see, the body part is correct. It's looking good. Fingers are looking good. Toes are looking good. Um, Let's see, you see there are some issues here, that's because the particle distance is too basically low. So if I want to fix that, I need to, as I mentioned, find this piece on the legs. So the foot wrap is, is, an, is the problem. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Bake Maps, Selection, deselect everything, and then find the foot wrap, and just bake that based on just the default number this should fix it actually sometimes the default number works well and this is actually going to fix all of these artifacts that you guys see here but there's a slight problem there i would have to set it a bit lower let's cancel it let's put it on 007 and let's try it again some of them are not going away that's fine you don't have to worry that much because you're not going to zoom on the character like that. And sometimes you can just paint it by hand and get rid of everything. So it's it's a, it's a fairly good clean bake, as you can see. Some of these are because of the distance. 
but again when you texture it you you will not see those errors um i usually actually clean everything i don't let these to stay there uh what else like these are fine as i can see see like i didn't even check this one and it baked properly like without any issues all of these are looking good some artifacts here that's how you fix it you just adjust so let me actually go to my final model there's like more artifacts here but let me actually show you my final baked version and you will see how clean it is so here's my final baked model as you can see the shoulder pad is looking good let me actually just isolate that i want to explain how you can bake um id map so in this case I needed to bake an ID map to separate these ropes, uh, these uh, laces or stitches because I want to be able to apply different color to those um, laces, right? That's why I need to bake them as a separate... Uh, I need to bake the ID map so that I can select basically the color here, right? I mean, there are some issues here which I need to fix. Um, I just need to, in this case, I'm going to do it in this way. Like I'm going to do it by mesh. Like basically I'll apply a paint, um, basically whatever adjustment, whatever it's called. I'll just add, apply a paint and then select this tool and then select um, mesh fill, put it on dark and then click on select these. So as you can see, it's going away because they're separate mesh. That's why I keep these separate. And then, uh, yeah, so I can pick colors and it's going to apply that material to the correct ID, right? To, to bake those ID, you need to go to texture set, bake obviously, and then you select your ID map. Um, then you can, in this case, I exported this as an OBJ. Um, if I go into ZBrush, I exported this piece as an OBJ with the colors. And when you go in Painter, you need to select ID. And then here, you need to say color source is from vertex color. The default is on material color, but you should put it on vertex color. By the way, this is the latest version of Substance. The previous version was a bit different. So when you get to the Substance 2020, this, these are the settings that I'm using. You can use the same settings. And in this case, because it's an ID map, I just keep it as always, because I just need to, the stitches to be baked into the leather, I just need the ID map for the stitches and the leather. That's all I need. And that's it. When I bake, it's going to give me a nice um, ID map, which is this one. And and here's the character. I'm working on the texture. I'm recording this. I'm going to make a tutorial about how to texture this character entirely in Substance Painter. Actually, I have some base textures for the body part, but everything else is I'm going to use procedural texturing in Substance Painter and I'm gonna hand, hand paint a lot of stuff. Let's look at it with some different colors, with some, sorry, some different like um, environment maps, which is HDR map, I believe. If I zoom on the arm, as you can see, these are all substance um, materials. I haven't done anything yet. I just um, use some smart materials. I dragged and dropped it on top of this, but I need to paint it, I need to do adjustments and I mean really do some uh, basically clean it up, right? I mean, you cannot just drag and drop smart materials and expect uh, to have a really nice character. You need to do a lot of paints. Like in this case, I spent a bit of time on the face last night. As, as you can see, let me actually load a better environment to show it. Um, and I usually test my characters under different lightings. To, to basically be able to texture it properly. Uh, I did some painting in on the face in Substance Painter already on this guy. It's not finished yet, but um, it's a good base for now. And if I go to the base color, this is my base color. This is all painted. I had a I had a base texture from ZBrush. I did some poly paints in ZBrush and then imported my poly paints in, as a texture into Substance Painter, used it as a base. Um, if I select the head, this is the head layer. You 
can see like I have some layers here. Um, I use some filters sometimes like hue saturation filters or luminosity filter. You can apply different filters as you know on the from the filter section like here. On the, if you look at the shelves filters you can choose which filter you want on top of your existing textures layers to basically adjust your maps right and then the other thing that i have on this guy these patterns like the skin pattern uh it's not from zbrush as you can see there are some artifacts i need to rebake this section to fix it but these patterns are this is made in substance painter so i just dragged and dropped the you know, like this, basically, if I show you a skin, right? I mean, those details are in Substance Painter. And when I render it with iRay inside Substance Painter, it looks like this. If it comes up, right? It looks like this. Pretty, pretty good. I'm kind of happy with the results. I can make it a lot better, just just requires time and, R and do I need to do some R&D and test it and you know there was another map that I really liked, I think it's this one this map is pretty cool I mean you can see it's working really well and this one doesn't have any displacement map right, I mean everything is normal map and just simple textures, no skin skin texture no a skin shader basically it's just everything in inside the uh, substance and array ray it looks pretty good so if you add those then it's gonna look even better i still need to work on the body and adjust the specular on the face make sure it's all correct that's it guys i mean this is how you bake maps this is how you problem solve it if you have any questions put it in the comment section let me know what you think let me know if I have answered all of your questions or if you have any other questions that I didn't answer. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, share this video. Um, and yeah, I mean, see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye bye.